but I've got my high school sweatshirt. I brought my mom from Plano Senior High and my, and my high school memory book, which has a lot of uh, interesting memories. Congratulations on this. I thought you were so excellent, not only in it as an actress, but also as executive producer. I don't know what you were most nervous about, but I would imagine that those nerves were, were quickly uh, calmed. What was the most nerve wracking thing about this, taking on kind of two roles here? I mean, I think it wasn't even taking on two roles. It was more so the emotional weight of Grace as a character. Um, I really was trying, <laughs> it's, it's daunting to walk into a scenario where I'm playing a girl who's grieving and going through very dark emotions and, and trying to get that right and trying to feel like, you know, she's a character who, she, she draws Henry in for a reason, you know, there has to, she can't just be a, uh, so unappealing, you know, there's gotta be some mystery, some, some, some intrigue to her, even though she's, she's kind of this darkness. So it was, it was kind of finding a balance of making sure you knew she was going through some, some trauma, obviously, but not making her a bitch basically. Well, and not only that, not overcoming it within two days, which sometimes these films do. And I thought you did such a great job of making that so authentic. Austin's character does everything he can to try to get your character to open up. If we met, if we met out somewhere and I, and I want to get you to open up to me, someone you just met, what's the subject that's an easy one? What do you love talking about? Oh, man. What do I love talking? I love talking. I mean, I just, I like talking about real thing i like talking about yeah. emotion i'm a very emotional human being like if if someone opens up to me i'll open up to them mm -hmm. i am usually kind of closed off to people i first meet just out of protection for myself i'm not i'm not an open book walking around with my heart on my sleeve for everyone but my close friends and family my heart's definitely on my sleeve mm -hmm. but i i think i uh <laughs> oh there's my dog oh! Oh, how's he doing? He's doing good, but I'm like, <laughs> Milo. I think we were worried about him. I know he's doing good. Um, if you want to get to know me, you 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 have to be open with me. You know, it actually leads to my next question. One of the great scenes in this, there's a scene with you and Austin in the library where you talk about what it's like being a teen and subjects that need to be addressed. How do you balance needing to talk about things, but being who you are, where people kind of expect and hope you to always open up? How hard is that balance? It's hard. I think I have found, I have understood the importance of um, my friends, my close, true, best friends in the world. I have three best friends who mean the absolute world to me, who I can talk to, who I can talk to for hours about things and they'll never tell me to shut up. You know, it's like people <laughs> constantly validate my feelings. I think it's, that's what I've learned is, you know, it's easy to kind of go to social media and want to like complain or, or be angry. And a lot of times I do do that. I definitely do. I'm very outspoken <laughs> on social media and say things that probably shouldn't be taken to social media sometimes, but I think I, very much find comfort, the most comfort in, in talking to my, my close people. Well, I, I applaud you for being authentic. Have they seen the film, your friends, your closest? My, yeah, they have. And we're yeah. seeing it again this Friday at um, a drive-in in LA, so yeah. Well, we've got the drive-in here in Glendale also showing it. So I appreciate you including Arizona. I know they just wrapped me. What's the most remarkable thing that's happened to you in this quarantine state? Just, ugh, man, just gr growing, growing. I feel like I'm growing a lot as a human being. I'm spending a lot of time uh, working on myself and my spirit and kind of just reading self-help books and trying to yep. be a better, more connected to myself human being. And I think I'm doing well. I think you're doing great. And you and I are doing the exact same thing. So kudos good. to us. Yes, good job. That's what we should be doing. <laughs> Congratulations on this. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. This has pretty much brought me back to high school minus some of the uh, guy drama. Did this really mirror what you went through? I read that this was very similar. 
Yeah, in, in in a lot of in a lot of kind of superficial ways, and a lot of, a lot of the superficial contours. Like I was the editor in chief of my high school paper. I did have a, a sort of push pull, uh, you know, roller coaster of emotions with someone that I was infatuated with, and and it was sort of returned, but not really. And I was not in high school, but some you know years later, in a very bad car accident. Um, oh so, my gosh! So so it it there was a lot for me to pull from. Um, but I think on a deeper level, it, it, it was, it was the looking at being young through a lens of pain and, and, and grief and tragedy and heartbreak that I could relate to because, uh, look, I, I look back at high school and I had some good times, but it wasn't, it wasn't the cheery poppy, you know, um, romantic uh, uh, interlude that that a lot of movies represent. Yeah, you managed to avoid all my pet peeves about films like this. What I can't stand sometimes is when things are rushed or this really overly witty dialogue that you know the character would not say. And this to me seems so real and the pacing of things, you know, she's been through a lot, but she's not gonna get over it in two days and all of a sudden they're gonna, I just, the pacing, how, how hard is that as a director to time and make that authentic? Well, I really appreciate you saying that. It was something that we worked really hard to achieve. Uh, from the beginning, I was, you know, one of the mission statements was we're going to let these characters breathe. Um, we're going to try to shoot this in predominantly long takes to um, give a sense of immersion and awkward pacing. Um, you know, the teenage years are uh, uh, not exactly your most articulate years. Grace happens to be <laughs> very, very, uh, very smart and beyond her, her years. But, um, but Henry's main issue is that he has a hard time expressing or articulating himself. So I, I wanted there to be those pregnant pauses and, um, and I wanted there to be a little bit of uh, maybe a little bit of uh, pac pacing discomfort for the audience that like, mm -hmm. well, well, okay, move it along. Like, but no, that's sitting in that is part of reliving, you know, th those days yeah. and those years. Well, and you couldn't pick two better actors. Lily, I know this is so personal to her. Um, how'd she do? Her first big gig executive producing, your opinion on, on, on her efforts here? She did, I mean, you know, the, the performance speaks for itself. Um, she, uh, uh, you know, she, as an executive producer, found the book, brought it to my attention. Um, and, uh, you know, it was great to have her sort of backing my, my vision. That means a lot to the rest of the cast and the crew. And we, you know, we were partners and she's, she's, she's great in, in that sense. Um, and, and as, and as an actress, uh, uh, you know, Lily, uh, Lily, has a fire burning in her. She wants to prove what she's capable of. And I think she, 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 I think she does that in this film. Yeah, I think she does that more quickly. They just wrap me. Where's that girl you were obsessed with in high school now? Don't know. I okay, don't know. Good. Her but, uh, loss. But, but, uh, but I have a feeling my fiance wouldn't want me to know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You know what? Congratulations. That girl's loss and kudos to you. You did an excellent job with this. It's nice to talk to you. I hope we meet in person one day. Likewise. Thank you, Tara. All right. My high school memory book. My high school mom. <laughs> yes. That's right. Um, how, how much did this mirror your actual high school experience or did it at all? It didn't. It didn't yeah. because I, um, it took me a lot longer to figure out myself and to be open about that. I was always a confident person, but um, there is a beauty and vulnerability that you see in the relationship between Cora and La that um, is so mature. And I don't think I was ready for that in high school. Yeah, I, I, I know I wasn't. Carol, <laughs> were you ready for that? And and did this mirror your experience at all? No, it did not. It did not. I'm I'm I am um Coral, both Coral and I are from Harlem, New York. I yep. went to school in Spanish Harlem, uh, from elementary school all the way through high school. So it's I'm a city girl all the way, always around. So it's very different from suburban life. Did you guys find after kind of connecting with each other and, and, and talking about your pet, did you guys connect at all without even knowing it maybe a year ago? 
I know Harlem's a big place, but I mean, did you all cross paths? We didn't, and I wish we did, because now that we know each other, we're obsessed with each other, and we're like <laughs> madly in love with each madly. other. It, it's it's, it's it actually the sometimes I think about it and I get I'm annoyed. I'm like, why do we know each other before? <laughs> Especially because we're both we Kara is is is. Uh, very well respected in the theater community and I, I, I love being part of the theater community as well and so it's crazy we didn't cross paths until probably the yeah. week before auditions the week That's before we that I got time. to see I got to see Coral do her thing on stage in Blacks so Aziza Barnes play directed by Robert O'Hara I got to see Coral and I was obsessed with them I was like wow well, it sounds like a lifelong connection has been made. It's funny, you read about the chemistry reads and uh, the director says that the minute Austin came in and read with Lily, they, they knew. Did you guys have a chemistry read as well? And did you know instantly this, this, is, this is happening? We didn't have an official one. So we both auditioned for Law. And I, I think when Richard met Kara, he said, okay, that's Law. And then when he met me, he said, I think this is La's love interest. And and Cora wasn't originally in the book or even in the script. It was written after we both had audition. So it it was an a, it was an accidental chemistry read where we had auditioned back to back and it all clicked in uh, the director's brain of like, oh, it's these two. They go together. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Our first day, our first day on set was like the the I guess the resolution to the, the, the climax song. yeah we had yeah, a kissing like a scene climax. that was our first day that was our <laughs> first day no wonder a connection was made oh yeah no um <laughs> yeah that's probably why <laughs> oh you guys I'm so glad that well I, it's nice to, I wish we could have done this in person but thanks for your time I know they're wrapping us it's so well done and you guys just knocked it out of the park so thank you oh, thank, thank you so much so this, is this, this really your me, high school jersey from then? Oh, I swear to God. In fact, the sad oh. thing is I don't remember who I dated. I had a guy. Had oh, really? Them. Is that some, dude's, that some dude's jersey? That's his number. And I think we dated like, for like 20 days. This wow. was a long time ago. Um, I, thought, I thought this was fantastic. I have to tell you, your character tries everything he can to get Lily's character to open up. If you want to yeah. get Lily Reinhardt to open up, what's a subject that works every time? Oh, geez. I don't know. Um, I mean, she's a pretty great person. Um, yeah, I mean, that's hard to say exactly. I mean, you know, I mean, she, but she was lovely to like, you know, definitely to like talk about this and like talk about the work on this, you know, she's the producer on it. Um, so there was definitely a lot of like passion there that she had. How, how about you? What works every time? If I want to get you to chit chat, what's a subject that you just love talking about? Hmm. I mean, I think movies, obviously, you know? Yeah. You know, I don't know. We're talking so far. You know, we're doing a good job. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, how's it going so far? You know, this this whole quarantine has just been absolutely surreal. What's the yeah. most remarkable thing, or has anything remarkable happened to you during this crazy time? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I think... You know, I'm trying to deal with it in the best way that I think everyone in the world is trying to deal with it. Um, you know, it's definitely like a very difficult time. Um, you know, we've never like, uh, you know, at least no one that's, you know, I mean, none of us have really experienced anything like this. So, um, you know, yeah, I think I'm trying to deal with it as best as anyone else. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting. Talk about everybody being in a state of limbo. I mean, this film kind of covers the idea of being in limbo. We're, we're all in limbo right now. You know, one of the things that you mentioned in the film, you know, Lily obviously has some things that happened to her. She's got some scars. And I love the line that scars aren't necessarily reflective of, of what's broken, but what, you know, I think the line is um, what's, been, what's being created. Do you have any scars? Is there a, a scar you have and a story behind it and how, oh. how your perception shifted on it? Like literal scars? Yeah, like uh, literal physical scars. Like physical? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think everyone's, you know, falling down on their bike or something. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't know if I can, like, think of anything specifically right now, but... Yeah, I think everyone has scars. I mean, you know, and the important thing is doing your best to uh, 
uh, pick yourself up and, and to let them heal, um, I guess, in their own time and do what you can to help them heal. If, if you went back to high school right now, would you be on the newspaper staff? What club would you join besides the drama club, which would be obvious for you? What club would I join? I don't know. I mean, I, I you know, I may just try to just be getting out of there as soon as possible. So I don't <laughs> know if I would like <laughs> give an answer to like a certain club. I, I know they just wrapped me, but have, has this shifted your perception of how much you take from the people that are older in your life, your parents? There's a great message about kind of looking to those who have been through it and, and, and maybe seeing them in a different light. Has that yeah. happened for you? Um, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, it's wonderful to have like, um, I think like having like mentors and something like that is like very important. Um, and yeah, and hopefully, I don't know, you know, hopefully someone watches this movie and is, um, sees that, you know, or sees the relationship that he has, like, with his sister and being able to reach out to family uh, for help. And, yeah, hopefully that, like, speaks to someone and, and uh, helps them if they don't have that relationship with, with family, maybe helps them uh, try to develop it, it more. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. You are one of the best actors of your generation. I said that oh. on Brad's status. I just think you're so effortless and talented. So awesome. Oh. I hope to see you again in person. Thank you. That is very, very nice of you to say. Um, well, this is great. Yeah. No, I, I, and I really hope to see you in person too. Thank you so much.